When we think about fruit, we think about health, fresh, natural, and safe. But not every part of every fruit is meant to be eaten. Now the word toxic can be a little misleading. In most cases, these fruits aren't poisonous in a dramatic way. A more accurate description is naturally occurring, compounds that can be harmful if eaten the wrong way or in large amounts. Today we're looking at fruits with parts you shouldn't eat, why those compounds exist, and how people safely enjoy these foods every day, right here on History of Simple Things. Apples are among the most familiar fruits in the world, crisp, sweet, and trusted. But hidden inside their seeds is a compound called amygdalin. Amygdalin can break down into small amounts of hydrogen cyanide when the seeds are crushed and digested. That sounds alarming, but context matters. Swallowing a few seeds whole is not dangerous. They usually pass through the body intact. The issue arises when large numbers of seeds are chewed, allowing the compound to break down. The takeaway is simple. Apples are safe. Just don't snack on the seeds. Cherry pits contain similar cyanogenic compounds to apple seeds. The pit protects the seed inside, and chemistry does the guarding. Accidentally swallowing a cherry pit isn't usually harmful. Chewing or cracking it is where potential problems begin. This is less about danger and more about design. The fruit wants to be eaten. The seed wants to survive. Stone fruits like apricots, peaches, and plums take things a step further. Inside their hard pits is a soft kernel that contains amygdalin as well. In some cultures, Apricot kernels are eaten intentionally, which is where risks increase, while one or two accidentally chewed kernels are unlikely to cause harm, eating many can be dangerous. This is one of the clearest examples of a food becoming harmful, not because it's evil, but because it's misunderstood. Elderberries show how preparation changes everything. Raw elderberries, along with their leaves and stems, contain cyanogenic glycosides that can cause nausea, vomiting, and stomach cramps. Cooking breaks these compounds down, which is why elderberry syrups, jams, and wines are safe and widely enjoyed. This isn't a fruit you should fear. It's one that expects knowledge. But not all harmful compounds are extreme. Some are simply irritating or problematic under certain conditions. Seeds from oranges, lemons, and limes contain tiny amounts of cyanogenic compounds, but the levels are so low that they're almost never an issue. You'd have to chew and consume an unrealistic number of seeds for it to matter. For most people, citrus seeds are harmless and easily avoided. Soursop is loved for its flavor and traditional uses, especially in tropical regions, but it's also often misunderstood. Certain compounds found in the seeds, leaves, and concentrated supplements have been linked to neurological effects when consumed excessively over long periods. Important distinction. Eating the fruit occasionally is not the same as regularly consuming extracts or supplements. Most concerns come from chronic, concentrated intake, not everyday eating. So far, we've talked about fruits where certain parts contain compounds that can be harmful if eaten incorrectly. But not all risks come from seeds or pits. Some come from naturally occurring acids that affect people differently depending on their biology. Oxalates aren't toxins in the classic sense, but for certain individuals, they can cause real issues. Kiwi fruit contains oxalates, which may aggravate kidney stone formation in people who are already prone to it. For most people,
kiwi is completely safe, even the skin and seeds. But for those with kidney concerns, large amounts may cause discomfort. This isn't danger in the traditional sense. It's biology working differently from person to person. Rhubarb shows how oxalates can matter even more when they're concentrated in specific parts of a plant. Technically a vegetable, but commonly treated like a fruit, rhubarb has edible tangy stalks that are widely used in desserts. The leaves, however, contain very high levels of oxalic acid, which can be genuinely dangerous if consumed. This is one of the clearest examples of nature drawing a firm boundary between what's food and what's not. Up to this point, the risks we've discussed mostly come down to moderation, preparation, or individual sensitivity. But some fruits carry dangers that are far less forgiving, especially when ripeness or identification is ignored. This is where caution becomes essential. Aki is Jamaica's national fruit and a powerful example of traditional knowledge protecting people from real harm. When fully ripe, the fruit naturally opens and becomes safe to eat. But when unripe, Aki contains hypoglycin A, a compound that can cause severe vomiting and dangerously low blood sugar. Proper preparation isn't optional here. It's essential. This isn't folklore. It's chemistry learned through experience. Aki depends on timing. Wild berries depend on certainty. Not all berries are safe, and some wild species, especially those related to nightshades, can range from mildly harmful to fatal. The danger isn't curiosity, it's misidentification. That's why one rule remains universal in foraging. If you don't know it with certainty, don't eat it. So no, fruit isn't secretly dangerous, but it does come with rules. Most problems only arise when certain parts are eaten, prepared incorrectly, or consumed without understanding. Once you know where those lines are, these fruits stop being risky and start making sense. Nature isn't warning us away, it's asking us to pay attention. And now that you know how to do that, you can enjoy fruit a little smarter. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.